So um, I asked both the batches to participate for this. Um, so I will show you the past paper question now and download in that one. So we, we, we basically do uh, these areas. So if you look at our slides, I think I have given all these slides. So basically we are going to look at these uh, four topics in the SOLIDWORKS <coughs> software. So we are going to look at assembly uh, in detail. Now we have two parts. So we, we, are, we are going to look at it in detail, not simple assemblies. We will uh, look at all these uh, complicated assembly techniques and we will look at how to get the drawings also uh, in SOLIDWORKS. So talking about the uh, module we do it last year, last year. I will show you the papers and the other things we did. So I hope everyone is having the software with you and the slides with you. Uh, we will, uh, I will record this lecture and upload to the YouTube and the Uscope. Both uh, I will do. Uh, So, talking about the assignments, uh, we have only one assignment uh, in this uh, lecture. So, at the end of the semester, just before the end of the semester, we will have our assignment and it will carry around uh, 15 marks from the final grade. So, yeah, this is under CA. So, so, so please remember uh, this is under continuous assessments. So, I will just uh, type these things. This is under continuous assessment, so you will get uh, 15 marks out of 100. So you may have midterm for the subject and you may have some other work for the CA. So the solid work is carrying 15% and uh, we will <coughs> uh, have the assignment just before the final exam. So, and we will release the CA marks, uh, Mr. I think Mr. Harshan is doing the other part. So we will release the uh, CA marks uh, before you go to the final exam. So if you fail the CA marks, you can't uh, write the final exam. That's why we release the CA marks. Um, excuse me. Okay, so uh, I will show you the assignments uh, we did. So last week, last year, uh, this is the distribution. So probably this time also, <laughs> this is the distribution. So please remember, this is under CA. So you have to pass the CA for the, the CA to write the final exam. So I will show you the paper last week, last year. So uh, we are basically testing your assembly <coughs> and drawing knowledge. So this is last year paper. We can give you the 2018 one also. And uh, we ask you to construct 3D models of given drawings. Uh, sorry, just part person and relevant colors and, and uh, do these things and use the assemblies, use these angles and uh, get the drawing shapes <coughs> and uh, get these part files and the drawing files and the assembly files and PDF files. Uh, and zip it. Uh, so there are there's some process here, not not like the first uh, year. So sorry, at least this has only some uh, two pages. Uh, so, 
something has gone wrong. Uh, okay, so this we have given a small hint actually to how to draw the gears. <clears throat> so we we will teach you all these things how to draw the gears and other things uh, using the libraries as well as from the basic uh, fundamentals. And we have given the set of uh, PDF files. So this is the last view we ask you to do. So don't get uh, panic about this. Uh, this is a robo gripper. So a lot of the students have done this. Within three hours, you can complete. So we ask you to model these gears <coughs> and uh, these arms. And we ask you to put a motor here and animate the things and show how the gripper works now if i show you some more details so we have given all the drawings like this so in this class uh, we are not worried about drawing complex parts basically we are concentrating on assemblies and drawings so this is one of the part uh, we have on and uh, we have this base part of the robot the gripper is the base part so all the dimensions uh, will be given in connecting rod small parts so you can see parts are not very complex left hand gear so this is how we should draw the gear so there are a lot of ways of drawing the gear uh, we can draw from the fundamentals so we can use uh, we can use the libraries and generate the uh, so this process is explained here. So you have two ways of doing that. Uh, we can generate the gears from the libraries and remove the unnecessary teeth. Or else you can use the fundamental theory and draw this. So there are two ways. So we have the left gear as well as the right hand gear. We, uh, there's a slight difference between them. Then uh, we have the pins to connect them, pin rods. Then, explore view I showed you uh, assembly details. So this is how it uh, assembles. So this, all the details are given in the assignment. So this was done face to face as a face to face exam last week. So this time I don't know what's the plan. So it might be a face to face exam or online exam. So I hope you are, you know what is the level we are expecting from you. So. So it is somewhat uh, advanced level drawings. So last uh, semester also I gave some good drawings. I a lot of guys have done it correct uh, in a good way. So we gave a vehicle uh, ring. Uh, so those are the practical knowledge we need to have as mechanical graduates. So that's why we give applications related to mechanical engineering. So this time uh, we haven't planned any assembly drawings. So. We will do the basic theory and do some tutorial questions and you will be able to easily do these things uh, without any worry. So this is how the course moves on, the SOLIDWORKS part. Um, so when you go to the industry, uh, you can uh, be confident and you can draw whatever they ask you to draw. So that's the whole objective of doing this uh, solid work session. Uh, so any questions up to this point? So remember, <coughs> this is the distribution. 15% uh, is given as a CEA. And uh, you have to pass the CEA to write the final exam. So actually, we don't give any makeup exams unless if it is a valid case, like uh, someone is getting sick or someone uh, say got an accident, it is an accident or likewise. Valid reason only we are giving the Makeup exam, so better you write the uh, regular exam. Makeup will be harder than the regular exam. That's how it goes. So, any questions are up to this point? I hope you can hear me clearly. If you can't hear me, just tell me those problems if you have any problem. <coughs> uh, you can speak up or you can have messages here. So. Uh, whatever you like but better you talk with me then i know you know you, are, you, are, you understood the theory or not and uh, we will uh, upload the tutorial question answers also some tutorials we will do it uh, here with me and uh, 
here we have a supportive staff. Uh, Mr. Sean is there, so I think you know about Sean. So he will also support me. So Mr. Sean, Sean is there to support me in this module. So uh, if you have any questions, you can ask from me or Mr. Sean. So any other good guy in uh, SolidWorks. So if you don't have questions, uh, I will upload this uh, but uh, last year question paper, exam paper, and we have the answers also, your senior budget's answers also. Everything is in one folder, so I see an image. So a lot of guys have done it uh, very well, so I don't, I think I cannot open this thing. My version is uh, somewhat uh, old. So all the things are done. So a lot of students have got uh, good marks. So we have the files here, everything is there. So I will uh, upload this uh, uh, question paper to the course web. Any questions before we start the class? So I hope you have the part files uh, with you. So we, you need to have the part files in order to start the session. <clears throat> we are going to start chapter 2L. We directly start from the assembly theory. Uh, So uh, we will look at some theory part uh, before we start the practical session. <clears throat> so we discuss uh, in the very first lecture in the first semester about uh, the assembly approaches. Now we have two different approaches, namely bottom-up approach and top-down approach. So the top-down approach is the approach we rarely use, but it's the most, uh, but, uh, but more better way. So this is the best way of doing these assemblies, but the top, of, top bottom up assembly method is sometimes somewhat uh, familiar to us. So we have to create all the parts one by one and assemble. So top down assembly, we don't create all the parts and assemble, we assemble the things and creating the parts. So this is, uh, this is like, a, uh, this is like how designing a house. So we start from the foundation and put the walls and roofs and complete the house. Bottom up approach. Top, top down approach is somewhat different. You have the big uh, last picture in your mind. So you develop your assembly according to that. So we will look at both approaches and we today we are going to start with bottom up approach. So I'm going to assemble a simple part now. <coughs> Something like uh, this I'm going to assemble. So we will look at uh, how to assemble the parts in SOLIDWORKS. There are different ways of doing that. Good ways are there, some somewhat uh, bad ways are there. So how we can assemble uh, the parts in a good manner. You have to remember when you assemble the parts, uh, you, you have to think about uh, this model will, uh, in the future, this model will change. If, if your boss comes and asks you to edit a part, uh, your entire assembly should not collapse. So if you are doing an engine, a vehicle engine, if, if, if your boss comes and asks you to change all the nuts or the ball sizes, your engine, other parts will not, should not collapse. So a lot of guys have that issue in their new assemblies. So for an example, if you do that robot gripper, say I'll take that example. <coughs> For an example, if someone comes and change the number of teeth here or the size of the tooth 
one two your assembly should not collapse so if your boss comes and ask you to change the number of teeth to uh, different value or change the diameter of the gear your other parts should not collapse so that's the main thing about assemblies otherwise you will get frustrated if you change only one one area other should not be collapsed so please remember that in the exam also you should do uh, be careful when you do assemblies so if someone ask and comes uh, tell you to change this uh, connecting rod to another size the other part should not uh, get collapsed and file should not uh, get give any errors so uh, when you do assemblies you should be very careful so not like the part models these has lot of parts so if you do a change to one part other part should not get affected for the full assembly you have to minimize those consequences uh, and uh, adverse effects so please remember that when you do assemblies so that's why we need to learn this in a proper manner so i'm going to uh, take uh, part files available in chapter 13 onwards sorry 12 chapter 12 onwards so we will uh, open this uh, folder called 12.9 so i'm going to <coughs> use this folder 12.9 to start up the lesson so i am not coming and double click and open this if you double click and open this uh, is it will be open as a part so i can't use that method so we have to open through the software so we will uh, start uh, new parts new assemblies now so i'm going to start new assemblies <coughs> now the now this window will pop up so there are a lot of ways of importing a part this is one of the ways of importing a part so i'm going to import my part now so we can go to browse and uh, browse the folder I, i have these parts so i'm going to browse that you can browse the folder uh, wherever you have the parts so i need the chapter 12 12.9 so why is body i need so i'm opening that why is body so you can i'll give you time to do these things if you have any questions you are, i'll repeat the things now why is body has been imported and once you import this why is body uh, it's coming here and the part file details are available so you can change the part file from here even uh now this uh, says wise body and there is a small letter called f here f means fix so this this like this is like the foundation so you have to understand what to import first say if you are doing a house plan foundation of the house plan is the first one to import not the roof or not the walls so here also you have to understand uh, what to import first so i i have imported the wise body which is the foundation base mod base part and this is called fix now fix means it's not uh, it's fixed to the uh, screen but uh, if you try to rotate it it will rotate and it will pan say if you want to pan it it will pan but uh, now it's fixed to uh, it says it's fixed to the solid works environment it's like the house plan your foundation is rotating around the earth so our earth is rotating but then the house is also rotating with the earth but we assume that house is fixed something like that is happening here you have to assume this is fixed to the uh, solid works uh, say if the solid works is uh, so to the solid works software so if you want to plot this you can right click and plot so don't plot the foundation if you plot the foundation uh, the animations is going to be difficult because i have to fix at least one body to get the others move so if you want to move the uh, this jaw and put a motor here motor to this jaw this should be fixed otherwise if this is floating you you cannot get a relative motion so if everything is relative it's going to be difficult so one should be absolute so you have to make sure one at least one part should be as absolute to get the motions of the other parts 
So remember, first part will be automatically fixed. Now I'm going to import the other Joe. Uh, how can I import now? So when I start the file, automatically that browsing window appears. Now I'll do it again. This automatically pop ups. So I can browse the required part. Fix. Now this is vanishing, disappears. Now I have to again import the parts. So we can go here and import a new insert components. Or oh, otherwise you can draw your parts. This is about the top down method. So these two related to top down method. Uh, we are not discussing that. We are discussing the bottom up approach. So I'm importing the other parts. This window will pop up again. And you can just get the job. So when you get the job, sometimes the software will automatically do some assemblies for you. It happens in some machines, some software. So this was automatically assembled for me. Now you can see it's sliding, but it's going through the uh, this uh, body. Uh, but assembly has been done a little bit. Now if you look at this blue color, that means there is a, there is some some assembly happened. So and it says minus here. minus means it's it can be uh, moved animated. But if you try to right click and fix it, uh, this cannot be now animated. So you can always do that. If you want to do animation, you have to always float the things. And if both are floating, what happens? It is like this. So both are floating. Now both are moving. So uh, uh, we can't get a proper animation. So that is the problem here. So at least one should be fixed. So normally the first part we are importing should be fixed. Now you can see the, uh, some assembly has been automatically done by the software. So if you just look at the assemblies here they have done, these are called mates. Some mates have automatically applied. So the one mate, mate is called coincident mate. Uh, another mate is there also coincident and the parallel mate. So coincident means it's taking the same similar phases and coincide with each other. Parallel means these two phases are parallel to each other. So this happened automatically in my computer. So you can also see whether you, you got it automatically. Uh, if it is not happening automatically, uh, we have to do it manually. So sometimes what the software do is, uh, this is not going to be okay. So this can be now taken now. So no mates now. So I have to do my manual mates. Uh, mate means I have to think uh, what, what phase is going to align with this phase what phase of this one is going to align with uh, the phase here. So you have to think a little bit and do these uh, assembly parts, assembling the parts. So if I just uh, show you some techniques we have, uh, we have a method called coincident. Coincidence will select the similar phases and coincide with each other. Then we have co concentric. So if you have uh, holes, uh, you can say, uh, get the uh, center of the circle aligned. Then uh, we have <coughs> distance method. If you want to maintain a distance, uh, there's a method called distance. And uh, you have angle method. So if you want to keep some parts at an angle with, with respect to another part, can be done. Then we have parallel methods. So we can have parallelism between the parts. This is like AutoCAD uh, Say AutoCAD also we had this parametric uh, coincidence and all these things. So solid does also ha have these kind of things. Perpendicular. So if you want to maintain perpendicularity, can be taken. Tangent. So there are a lot of snaps. Uh, those kind of things are there in 3D mode. So we will look at how to do these things one by one. Uh, if you have any questions, always. Uh, ask questions. So, so I hope everyone can import their files like this. You see the recording. Okay. Uh, so we we are going to do now uh, some assemblies menu. So there is a tool called Mate Tool. So I'm going to start this tool. Now these set of methods are automatically there. You do, if you want, you can select the method by yourself or else will will allow the software to select. So depending on the 
faces, you click. Software will select the best method. Now he has selected, uh, I have selected these two faces and he automatically selected this coincident one. These should touch with each other. So my requirement is these two guys should touch with each other. So if it is okay, just press the okay from here. Don't press okay from here. So if you press okay from here, what will happen? You have to rerun the command again. So if you press okay from here, this command still working. So I have to give at least three preferences. So we have to restrict our motion in X, Y, Z directions. So at least three we have to give. If you give two, sometimes uh, you can have some uh, motion. So if you give three, it's fixed. Now this can be assembled with this case. So you can see it's now coming and aligning with the faces with the base and it's coincident again. Okay. And this face can be coincide with this face. So okay. Now I have done three makes and I restricted uh, that motion in every direction. So you can't animate this now. Uh, press OK to terminate. And if you look at this one, I have given coincident, coincident, and coincident. All these are coincident. Uh, and it's now there is no minus sign. So if there is no minus sign, that means you cannot animate the thing. If you want to animate this one, at least you have to remove one mate. So if you delete this mate, now it will be minus here. And you can animate your <coughs> job. This will penetrate. So we have to stop from limit switches. We can have limit switches and stop. So no problem with that. Uh, for the time being, it will penetrate and move like this. So I can do a I can apply a motor and now do some animations. So this is uh, the basic idea. So I will uh, redo this and show you how it works again. Let the foundation base part keep it whatever you like then get the other parts here we have only <coughs> Joe so anime uh, assembly may be happening automatically it happened automatically actually minus there some coincidence are there so I will delete these automatic uh, things and I will apply manually so you can take this away this cannot be taken away now so you can see we can uh, Rotate it, but everyone will get rotated. So now we will assemble using mates. So sorry, I made a wrong mistake. Now, if this is happening, you do it again. So select this one, this one. Okay. Then select this face, this face, okay. Then this one, this one. So this is how we did a perfect assembly. This is fixed now, you can't animate. So if you want to animate this thing, we have to either delete this one or we can suppress this one. So if you suppress it, it's the temporary thing. You can unsuppress. So if you suppress here also, it's now ID, it's minus, you can animate the thing. So do it and see, and if you have any questions, tell me. I will give some time.
okay so if you are okay we will look at the other <coughs> methods of doing this so this is not the only way of doing this uh, i will show you some more methods now i showed the, that uh, we have several other methods like con concentric we have to explore all these things distance method angle method parallel method perpendicular likewise tangent so we have to study all these techniques then it's going to be easy uh, when we do the designs so <clears throat> now if I want to do it in a different manner so I just delete them we will look at uh, other ways of assembling this now there's a tool to uh, technique called concentric so if you just look at the parts here, we can have some relationship between this circle center and this circle center. So if you just select the uh, inside of the circle like this, this whole hollow part, this way, uh, concentric uh, method is going to apply. So concentric method is automatically selected. And if you press OK, now uh, some assembly has been done. Now this is the situation. It's concentric. So you can animate this way. If you want to rotate uh, like a motor, this is the best way. So then you have to stop it in another, using another coincidence, something like this can be given. So, okay. Now if you press okay here, it's minus still, we can do an animation. Now we did what? We did concentric and coincidence. So, <clears throat> Uh, I'll do it again. Get the mates. We can select the hollow part like this. So automatically concentric uh, button is selected. Press OK. Now this is like this way. Uh, we have to stop that motion, rotation. So one way is uh, you can select this space and this part also. Both the, there are a lot of ways of doing this. Now, this is now done. So any questions up to this? So I have applied this time concentric and coincident. Can you show the last uh, feature again, please? It's con concentric. Yes. <clears throat> if you want, you can select the method and do, but no need in solid works. Normally, we can just select this internal part here and the internal part. Here. Now the concentric happens. Then we can just select these two faces and get the make. So you do it and see any questions, tell me I'll do it again.
we will look at more techniques uh, now this is we can do animations from here so for the time being i will just uh, apply a motor and see how you can do this i will show you we will do this motor uh, animations later in detail now for the time being i will just apply a simple motor and show you how it works now we have one degree of freedom here so we, we this is only the freedom we have to move along the body so i will just apply a simple motor now uh, so if you want to apply some more motion there is an area called motion studies so i will just go to here and you have a time graph here and you have some lights cameras those things you can adjust the lighting we have these uh, parts and the mates yeah. so now this is the timeline and we have the three methods called animation basic motion and motion analysis animation is uh, it's like cartoons you can't do any calculation so if you do a basic motion and motion analysis you can do calculation so motion analysis is the most advanced one it will give you accurate results and if you do some kinematic dynamic uh, equations can be uh, say applied and you can generate graphs so this is also somewhat good then you can apply some here as they say springs gravity and all these things so this is like normal uh, cartoons so if you want to do calculations so use this uh, last one second one is also somewhat good so i i am doing just a basic animation so if you don't see these buttons uh, sometimes some students may not see these but motion analysis may not be there in your computer if you haven't installed uh, solidworks motions these may not be working properly so if you don't see those things uh, we can always come here there's a tool called addins so we have to turn that addins on so we go and uh, to addins and there is an area called solidworks motion so in my machine i have uh, ticked that solidworks motion so both sides have been ticked then every time it will be appearing otherwise if you select this one only again you have to come here and start so so see whether your computer has this uh, thing installed otherwise you can't do a proper motion analysis so for the for exam sometimes we may ask you to generate a graph we may ask you to apply some poses and calculate the values get some results so check whether this is available so it's coming under tools addings and we i have this one also tick this one also tick so simulations uh, actually we don't do in the class but animations motions we are doing so this should be tick if you have time just explore the other areas so, so i'm also not good in all these areas so you have electrical solid works plastic so kind of flow simulations so a lot of areas are there to explore if you have time just go through those things and try to study <clears throat> so now i have i have taken animation for the time being is enough then we have here uh, motors so we will have or, or uh, this animation wizards springs gravity dampers forces likewise a lot of things are there so we will look at uh, them later for the time being i will apply a simple mode so i will select the mode and we can get different kinds of motors one is a rotary motor uh, and the other one is a linear motor and another one is their special kind is their path made mode so path made uh, i hope everyone can understand rotary linear path made is uh, we can drive some object along a path like you say if you are designing a robo car which follows a path <coughs> so you can uh, apply a motor like path made motor it is specially needed when you do some uh, say production lines animations those kind of things so if you are designing a production line you can uh, animate the parts moving in the production production line using this path made motor so we will look at them later for the time being i need the linear motor uh, and i will do what i will 
give this input motor location. Yes, just you can select this edge. So the motor direction is now here. If you want, you can change the direction. And uh, other things automatically filled up. So this is filled up. It's constant speed, 10 millimeters per second. I can give uh, other ways. These input servo motors also available. So this is a constant speed motor. That's all I am giving. You can change the value here if you like, safe as so forth. Now, uh, automatically, five second time graph has been created. Motor is there. So these are the hotkeys. Uh, if you want, uh, you can drag it and make it uh, 10 seconds. And if you want, you can turn off the motor here. After two seconds, you can turn off the motor or change the speeds. A lot of things can be done. So later we'll discuss them. For the time being, I will do some uh, simulation and see whether this is going to work. So this is working, it's penetrating. So software doesn't know whether there is a barrier here or not. So it will do. It. So this is how we do a basic animation in solid. So we have to understand that uh, first uh, there should be a degree of freedom. So at least you should, you should have one degree of freedom. Here the freedom is sliding along the body. Uh, and uh, we have to apply a correct motor. So if I do it from the beginning, we can create a new motion study. Again, a new one. Now there is no motor here. I, what I did was I went here, get the linear motor and select the edge of the jaw and direction can be changed. And I just gave some 10 millimeter per second constant speed. If you want, you can have equations written here also. Uh, distance uh, time graph can be given, or as oscillating graphs can be given, uh, or as uh, segment wise we can give. Like uh, this is so you can start end and the value. So uh, there are a lot of ways of doing this. So for the time being, I just use the constant speed. Okay, and uh, you can just play it and see whether it's working. So this is uh, the most fundamental way of doing an assembly and a, a simple animation. Any questions, uh, just tell me. So can you do the animation also? Okay. So since I have done animation here, uh, we can delete it. Uh, this last one, they don't allow you to delete. So I will create a new one. Create new motion study. Motion study two. So uh, now what I did, uh, I can come here and select a motor. In this case, I have only free only I have the freedom to slide, so I have to select the linear. If you just select the rotary, it will not work. So you have to select the correct motor. Just select the edge. This edge can be selected. This edge can be selected. Whatever the edge, this edge can be selected. If you select this way, it's wrong. So we have to select uh, correctly, and this is all automatically filled up motor direction. If you want, you can change it and uh, define the speed. Just that's all. And uh, when you play this button here, it should work. Uh, this is just a normal play button. But if you look at this one, uh, this may uh, this will do calculations and play. 
so it, it will run some calculations then uh, you can generate some graphs and other important uh, results so we will do those things later for the time being just uh, understand how a basic animation is done uh, so default time period is 5 seconds so i hope uh, you are okay thank you sir Okay, so we will look at <coughs> the other techniques now. <coughs> so I showed you a small motor, how to apply a motor. Now uh, we have we have learned this theory first thoroughly. So I did the uh, coincident, concentric. Then we have distance method. So the idea of distance is if you don't want to animate. Or oh, else, uh, say oh, basically, if you want to keep this distance uh, as a fixed value, so you can have it coincide like this, or else you can have some gap, fixed gap. So you can ask the software to do that using the distance method. So I will just do it and show you. Just select these two faces. So once you select these two faces, it's automatically coincide. And uh, there is a tool here available, distance. So you just click on this. And uh, by default, it's 29 millimeters away from each other. So we can adjust the distance like this. So always it will maintain 20 millimeters between each other. And press OK. OK. So I gave a fixed distance to these two parts, 20 millimeters. Now it cannot be animated now. It's fully fixed to the, there is no minus sign. It's a, it's a perfectly assembled. So this is how the distance method works. It's similar to coincident, but you will keep a distance between the two faces. So I will do it again. 
just go to mate here select the faces you want to keep the distance and come here and enable the distance method and give a value you want press ok now i can't do animations there is no minus so if you have the minus sign only you can do animations otherwise you can't do animations so remember that Okay, I think uh, we will move to the next uh, area. So, next area is all angles. So, before we come to this angle, uh, we will uh, look at some uh, fundamental uh, errors people may do. Now, this is like the parent in the design. So, this is the parent base part. This is a child. So the child is always depends on the parent. So if someone comes and try to change the parent or simply delete the parent, what happens to the child? So all these mates will be uh, deleted. So if you just try to do this, your parent vanishes, your child is now having no say no foundation, no parent. So here this is going to be minus, no mates. And this is now floating. Now that this is what happens uh, in assemblies. Some guys they come and do changes to the parent. So some sometimes you may do a you may change this to a circular shape. Now this is a flat flat face. You may change it to an arc shape. So when you change this to an arc shape, the faces are not going to select. So there will be an error pops up. So uh, when you do the mates normally. We ask you, uh, if you are doing a complex design, we ask you not to depend on the 
parent. So if you depend on the parent, it will be a problem. So all these mates depends on the parent. So without the parent, they can't survive. So if you do a mate which depends on the parent, uh, there will be a problem if you do a change to the parent. So we have other ways of doing this same example uh, without depending on the parents. So, that, but that is somewhat time consuming. So if you try to do the designs without depending on the parents, it will take some time, but those, that those are the most accurate ways of doing a design. So I will just uh, take a new file and show you how it's done without depending on the parent. Now first part, first part uh, it will be somewhat okay, but if you want you can have this first part also depend on someone else. Now the most accurate way of doing this is first part should also should depends on the, depends on these SOLIDWORKS original planes. So we, we are going to use these original planes to design our uh, assembly. So these planes cannot be deleted, so no one can come and delete these. So if you if your assembly depends on these original planes, uh, there will be no collapse. So now I'm going to do what I'll try to float this, and I'll try to assemble this this uh, part from with these original planes. So this should this no need to do this. Uh, you can have it fix and do, but most accurate way is make this float and assemble the assemble this one with the original planes. So what I'm going to do that. Uh, is I'll show you how to do that. Uh, now there is no rule of selecting faces or always we can select the planes. Now front of this original plane and we can select the front of this part. Part file also these three cannot be deleted. So uh, without selecting the faces like this I'm selecting the front of part. So the front to front match. So no one can delete these basic planes. So if you try and come, uh, if you come and try to change the base part, uh, you cannot, since you don't do any deletions in the front plane, there will be no harm. So press OK. And you can uh, mate original top plane to the part top plane. So all are plane to plane ma matching now. Then original right plane can be mated to the part right plane. So now I did what? I may, may use the planes to mate the file. So all these are now done, coincident, coincident, coincident. But all are using the original planes, these three planes as well as these three planes in the part. So these are, then there will be no harm because I cannot delete this place. <coughs> and you can see there is no minus sign anymore. <coughs> Now I will uh, upload the, import the uh, job and do the same operations. So the job is automatically now assembled. Some assembly has been done, so not done. So it's minus here. So I earlier what we did, we just select this face, this face, that. So now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the original place. So we can expand this and get the original plane, say front of this original one and this, say, this in this case it's right. So you can select these two and apply the main. This is how it works. So if you are not getting it correctly, you can always <coughs> flip it uh, in 180 degrees. There's a tool to uh, align, anti-align, align. So you can always Turn it 180 degrees like this. Then it's done. Then uh, now uh, when you do these kind of things, there will be somewhat difficulty. Top plane is here, and the part top plane is in the middle. So now you have some issues. So if you try to assemble top to top. This is going down like this. So I want to have uh, 
have this space here. So we have to give a distance in this case. So distance I will just try it and see. So from here to here, what's going to be the distance? So uh, we have to do a calculation and apply this. So this will take some time. So I'm taking the top plane of the original and the top uh, plane of this part. So from here to here, I have to calculate the value. So from here to here. So it's not 50. Say if it is 30, something like this. So now 30 is okay. So from here to here, it's 30 distance. So you have to do additional calculations in these cases. So that's why it takes some time. So, so I'm not uh, depending on the phases. Uh, advantage is if someone comes and delete this phase of the jaw, the bottom phase, uh, your assembly will not collapse because no one cannot delete this guy. Okay, so I hope you understand. So when you do a lot of editing, this method is easy. If you do simple designs, no need to follow this. But uh, in designs which has a lot of editing, uh, complex uh, shapes, then this is better. Uh, done. Now, uh, two animations have been done. This is well, sliding. So I have done two, uh, sorry, only, only one here, here. Sorry, two, two has been applied. Distance and distance and the coincidence. So now, uh, if you want, you can uh, stop this one even by giving a value from here to here. So now, if you delete this parent, there is no problem for the child. Child is still sliding. The child is not going here and there. It's still sliding because the child is depending on the original plane C. So without the parent, child can survive. So that's this is the whole idea. So with the parent also he can survive. Without the parent also uh, he will survive. With the parent also he is having the same animation. If you suppress or delete the parent, no problem, he can survive. So when you do a complex design, follow these kind of procedures, uh, then your design will not collapse. So I hope you understood, but this is taking a lot of time because uh, we have, if you don't do the design correctly and if you don't select the planes accurately, you have to do calculations and apply the distances. Now, still if you want to have this kind of a perfect uh, fit, perfect coincidence, we can apply a mate again. Mate, I'm not relying on the child parents' planes, I wish to rely on the original plane. Top plane. And if you want, you can select this space even. So I am not relying on the parent, but I rely on the child faces. If you are pretty sure that this is not going to change, you can select this face. Otherwise, you see, come and select uh, child front place. So this is same. Now we have to do a distance calculation uh, and give that value. So from here to here, what is the distance? So there are tools to calculate the distances in the, the software. Uh, I have, we have discussed these things as an under evaluate we have measure two. So you can measure from here to here what is the distance? 26 millimeters. So we have discussed these things uh, in the previous lesson, last semester. 26 millimeters should be there. Then it's a perfect point zero. Now it's fully assembled. Uh, no minus sign. No minus sign. I can't animate, but I don't want to have the parent. Okay, if I delete this or suppress, this is nicely there. You can't, you can rotate, but it's not floating. It's not minus. So I hope you understood the concept. Uh, so this is somewhat difficult, but uh, better you know about this also. Any questions about this, you can try it and see. So a lot of plane to plane matching has been done.
<coughs> okay so we will move on to the next uh, area so if you are okay with this i will move on to the next uh, topic it's called the angle method uh, so if you want to maintain some angle between the two parts we can use this so i will try to an assemble this and uh, animate this so we will delete this i'll get a new file Uh, this is the file we need 1220. So, uh, uh, we have the uh, already assembled module, but I will start from the beginning. So, we need the base. Now, we need the other parts. Now, if you want, you can go again and import these things, but it will take some time. So, if you know the folder. Which are which have the parts? You can quickly uh, drag and drop the files. Now, how can I do that drag and dropping? You have to come here and enable this view palette. There's a tool called View Palettes. Click it. Sorry, File Explorer. Click it, and you just browse through the folder where where you have these parts. So I have it here in my folder so you can browse from this file explorer tool so this this these are the files i need so here the advantage is i can look at the preview so the preview is shown thumbnail uh, then we can do what we can just uh, drag and drop this file parts so rather than going through this tool and browse, it will take some time. You can have this file explorer and browse browse to the folder the files are located. Then just get the then just uh, drag and drop. Now we can do a assembly. So we will do an assembly now. Insert sorry, mate. The easiest ones are now this circular shape and this form. So I'm not uh, using that uh, proper plane method. I'm just using the parent and child parts, which is faster. But when you do a correct uh, complex design, use these planes and do the uh, assembly. Now uh, this can be taken out, and this face should be assembled to this face. So I have done two assemblies. Now, I have done a concentric and a coincident assembly. And now this can be animated. You can see when I drag it from the edge, rotate from the edge, it's rotated. So animation is there. You can put a motor and animate. So we will look at how to do that uh, in a while. <clears throat> or else if you don't want this to rotate, what we can do, we can stop that rotation. How can I stop it? Easiest way of doing that is taking the planes here because this is a circular shape. You can't select a flat face. So you have to come here and select a plane like this. And this front plane can be matched to the parents' front plane if you want. Otherwise, you can look at this original plane. So we didn't select the originals. We just match the front to front like this. So I match. Front of the parent and front of the child. So this kind of alignment is happening. Okay, I hope you are following me. Okay, now uh, it's not minus. Uh, you can't rotate. You cannot rotate. It's not rotating. This is fully fixed. Then we can uh, get the top part also upper link this way and try to assemble it in a normal method just select this space okay and this space and this space okay i hope you are okay with this now i have done two for this two minutes this can be rotated 
So this can this is fixed. Only this is rotating. So if you try to rotate this guy, say we can come here and suppress this or delete. Now what happens? This guy is rotating. You can rotate it, but you, you see this is rotating, but this is not rotating. Because we have, we didn't fix this one and this one. So the, there's a freedom of rotating this one, and there's a separate freedom of rotating this guy. But this guy and this guy both are not rotating because this this doesn't have connection. Okay, I hope you understand. This we didn't uh, uh, coincide this plane and the plane here. So if you want uh, to rotate uh, the entire part from this bottom edge, what we can do is we can select the upper link via this plane and this pin this kind of a plane. So now what happens? We can rotate the entire part from the pin. Okay. So always think about relative motion. So you have to have some guys fixed, otherwise it's not going to work. So now this is happening. Even from this edge, I can this part I can rotate. Even from this part, I can rotate. So you can look at what I did here. First, I just uh, had the coincident this way. Then this was suppressed. This was suppressed. Then I can rotate this one, and I had three mates for the top part: concentric, coincident, and parallel. Parallel mate is also there. Parallel is like coincident. So all these things are done. So then I can apply a motor here and rotate. So I will look at uh, how to apply a motor in a while. So you can just do it and see. Let me know any questions. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know.
Okay, any questions? So we will apply a motor now if you don't have questions. So understand this uh, relative motion. So if you just suppress this one, I can rotate this way, but I cannot hold from here and rotate because there is no connection between these two. Uh, so we have to have a connection between them. Uh, now you can do a rotation. So wherever you put the motor is important. Uh, if you put the motor here or here is important. So I will apply a motor now, motion studies. This time we are going to apply a rotary motor. This one. So to apply the rotary motor, we can select the circular edge. So this can be selected. This face can be selected or you can select an edge like this. So rotation happens this way, you can flip it. And it's 100 RPM. So this can be changed from uh, these different settings. So I could press OK and I can animate it now. This is the situation. So this is how we get a basic uh, rotary motion. And I hope you can try it and see any problems tell me. So I'll show you what I did in this one. So if I just select this space, or else you can select the edge here, and the RDC is automatically filled, and I adjust the RP. Okay. Yeah, uh, sir, how do you connect the upper link and the pin? Upper link and the pin. Uh, I use this uh, mates. Uh, now, this is not connected. Now, this is rotating, this is freely rotating. 
So I did what? Uh, since these are <coughs> circular objects, uh, we have to use the planes. So I just use the middle plane of this upper link and the pin. So what I did was I expanded these things and took the top plane of this pin and uh, you can take the front plane of this pin top plane of the upper link and the front plane of the pin so plane to plane match if you want you can select this plane and, and this face also uh, then it's uh, going to be a parallel thing now this is coincident parallel is all, almost similar to coincident uh, plane to plane matching happen. now if you do it correctly uh, you can hold from here and rotate. Of course, from here also I can rotate. Okay, sir. Thank you. So I am using a mix of techniques. The most accurate way is using these original planes and do this. But when you take the original planes, it takes some time. So that's why I took the faces as well as the planes here. So if you find a circular object, you don't have planes. So you faces. So you have to select the planes in the middle. So you don't have a flat face here. Select the middle plane. Here we have the flat face, but uh, I selected the middle plane. Then it's uh, coincident. So it's up to you. Remember when you do a real project work, uh, there may be modifications later, so have some uh, freedom for those modifications and you do your assemblies. In the uh, theory class, it may not be that kind of a problem. Even in the exam, it's not going to be a big issue because we don't ask you to change the design in the middle of the exam. So, But in your, if you do a project work in the industry, they may ask you to change the design. So you have to accommodate all those provisions and do your designs uh, otherwise it will be a really difficult thing uh, now now let's look at another method this angle method so how can i maintain a fixed angle so if you want to pick, uh, maintain say 45 degrees always we can do that so i i want to maintain 45 degrees from this between this space and this always we can we have to maintain that so it's not going to be animation anymore it's going to be a fixed so i will do that you can just select this space over the middle plane so i just select this space and this now once you do that it, it's going to be a coincident again but we can uh, enable this angle more option so when you enable this angle option i can apply a value say 45 degrees now always this 45 degree will be maintained between the two faces. So this is like, uh, if you want you can flip it, 45 degrees can be measured the other way. Uh, and this is like fixed now, okay. So you see the minus sign mentions. So I don't have a minus sign anymore in here. You can't put a motor and rotate this now. This is fixed, fully fixed. We can't rotate it. Cannot be done. So this is a perfect ascent. That now. So what I did, I uh, applied this angle method. This angle method from here. So just do it and see if there are any questions. Then. Sir, can you just repeat it again? Angle thing. Yeah, yeah. Sir, 
So now this is pre rotate. I can go to mains. Uh, just select the faces. Now this face can be selected or middle plane or middle plane of this uh, base part or you can select the face here. Now it's perfectly parallel. Parallel or coincide. Both are similar here. And you come here and apply an angle. So I can just give say 45 degrees. If you want to measure 45 this side, you flip it. This side. So you can have it both sides and press OK. OK. Uh, now this is a fixed, fully fixed part. Now you can't put a more than do animations. Now if you try to animate it, it will definitely give you this kind of a warning. Uh, due to model changes, the following components or features cannot be set to their pre previously specified locations or values at that start of animation. So uh, if I would you like to update the affected key, select yes to update, select yes. So now the motor is there. If I try to animate it, I think uh, they are not updated. So you cannot actually do it. This is they are taking the previous values. So if you try to do a new animation, it will not work. Software hasn't been updated. So you can apply the motor again and see or take a new motion study and see it's not going to work. This is they are taking the previous in scale. So it's not updated. Still not update. So, uh, if you take a new motion study, definitely you cannot rotate. Any questions up to this point? So, parallel and coincidence are both similar. Uh, only thing is, coincidence uh, you are touching with each other. Parallel, you can have a distance. So, I hope uh, this is simple for you. Uh, we will look at perpendicularity. If you want to maintain perpendicularity, can be done. So here I have given an angle. I have one one method is I can give 90 degrees here, or else I can ask the software to keep some nine, keep 90 degrees always using this perpendicular method. So we can select the method and do this. Otherwise, sometimes the software is not going to take it correctly. So I can maintain perpendicular. Uh, it's kind of an angle, but this is uh, this is the thing I can change the angle, but here I don't, can't change. And parallel is this way. So parallel and coincidence are almost similar in this case. So I hope you understood coincident, parallel, perpendicular, tangent. I didn't do still concentric. I did distance and the angle. Locking also we can lock it permanently. If you think that uh, these uh, mates will collapse or mates will be changed by someone else, you can per permanently lock it. So normally we don't need to lock. If you want, you can lock it. Uh, so I hope you understood the concepts up to now. Any questions up to now? So if you don't have questions, we will look at the tangent option. Uh, this is important when you have circular objects, uh, when you don't have uh, flat faces. So we will try to assemble like this. So I will take the part, base part, spear. So this is the base part. So spears, you can quickly draw. How can we draw a spear? We can use the revolt tool. So we can just uh, draw a section like this and revolve it. You can quickly get the spear. So I hope everyone can remember these things. Uh, now we'll take the end pin. Now this is floating freely. Now if you want to... Uh, sorry. 
if you want to uh, get something like this uh, we will first uh, restrict the motion so we can select uh, something like this flat plane here and uh, flat plane so i selected top of this sphere and top of this pin and make you can select the plane and apply this tool or else select the tool and apply the plane it's coincident is done now uh, now this is the situation it's coincide but it can go here and there so now if you want you can apply a tangent make. so if you want to touch these two each other just apply the tangent automatically the tangent will be selected here okay now it's like a solar and planetary system you, you can have the motion like this so it's almost uh, assemble but it has a minus value meaning that you can animate this thing. so uh, what i did was i had a coincident made like this and tangent made like this you can just try it and see uh, we will uh, do some tutorials and then you will use these things in the tutorials so always this uh, tangency is maintained you can see a small gap depending on the computer resolutions but it's actually uh, touching So these areas I will look at uh, next day. I will just introduce you the tutorial. So these are some uh, advanced methods. Next day, next Thursday, uh, we'll do this uh, class on Thursdays every Thursday until we start the face-to-face -face lessons. When I start the face-to-face -face lesson, it will be normal Wednesday slot. So until I inform, uh, we'll have this online class. Uh, we will look at the tutorial a little bit. This is the tutorial we will we are going to do. Uh, this is a three hour, almost three hour tutorial. Uh, this is starting from the basics. That is, you have to draw the parts and do. So, I hope everyone can manage the part designs now. So, if you do the part designs and try to do the tutorial, it will take around three hours. Now, we have the parts already drawn for you. So, we can... Uh, Get those parts already drawn and uh, try to start this tutorial. So I will uh, start the tutorial and you can complete at home. Uh, any questions, uh, tell me next day. So we have a folder called Benchwise. All the parts have been drawn for you. So I have to decide what to take first. So the base part, base feature, so the uh, foundation. So you have to take this as the base part. Excuse me. Just take it and see, I, I'm getting a ball. I'll come back.
Excuse me, sir. Are you telling something? We can't hear your voice. Uh, so I did uh, what I did was uh, I assembled these two parts. I hope you are okay. Now I took this uh, uh, part, this rod, and I'm trying to assemble it. Now the idea is when you rotate this handle, this should go backward and forward. So when you rotate this handle, this should not rotate. This should not rotate. This should go and backward and forward. You have to have some some threads here, so the design uh, doesn't have threads inbuilt. So we can have some mechanical mates called thread mates. Later we'll dis discuss those advanced methods. So we have to have threads here to uh, go this backward and forward. Some this area we haven't uh, drawn any threads. But no need to draw the actual threads. Uh, we can ask the software to do it in a virtual environment. So the idea is when you rotate this one, thread mechanism is there. So the thread mechanism will help you to take this backward and forward. Otherwise, you will wonder when you rotate this one, this guy will also rotate. That, is, that doesn't happen. When you rotate this one, there's a thread here. So this bar will go forward and backward. So this guy and this guy are fully fixed, actually. So there should not be any relative motion between these two. Otherwise, when you rotate this, uh, it won't happen. So we can save this file for the future work because after we discuss the thread mechanisms, uh, we can get the final outcome perfectly. So we will just have it, uh, uh, we will do some basics here only. I'll show you how to do it. Uh, we can select this space here inside and here this one. And uh, talk this one and this one. I think now it's perfectly set up. Uh, there's a small, small gap. I think uh, we look at it. So we will, then you look at my design here and this design. This design has a small part in line here. My doesn't my design doesn't have the line, so this should come out a little bit. So I I have to have some. I, I think I did um, wrong something wrong here. So you have to have a perfect uh, fitting. I will redo it. So the best way of doing that is taking this face and this face. So that's easy. So I will take this face and this face. So there may be some place or tolerances to uh, duplicate the things. So we don't, uh, uh, since we don't have any lubrication, those layers, there may be some uh, gaps. So this is not the real uh, product. So now this is how it works. You have this part in line here, part in line here, and now this is going up uh, back, uh, backward and forward. So now you, if you try to rotate it, you see it's rotating. You can see it's rotating. So I can have a motor, but it will not go backward and forward uh, unless you have a thread mechanism here. So you have to have a thread mechanism. Later we'll discuss how to do those things. So uh, what I did was here I just applied a coincident from between these two and a constant. So when you rot now this can be rotated, and you can have a backward and forward motion. So I hope you are okay. So I will going. I'm going to save this now. Please save these things. Otherwise, it may collapse. Your files may crash. So we will save this. So once you save this, it will ask you to rebuild the thing. So I, I'll save as, I'll do a save as. Uh, rebuild. We 
have hold a bank choice. Did it type to did it. So it's saved as a SolidWorks assembly file. Save. So once you save it, uh, it's it is a whole file. So you just save it. Uh, you can just go and check. Yeah, it's it was saved. Uh, it saved in a different folder. DME 2019 folder. 2000. I can't find it. Anyway, you can save it and see. So I will take it, uh, but save it in in a correct uh, say in inside the same folder because this guy needs the other parts. So please save it in the correct uh, same folder. DME two zero three one two thousand nineteen. Okay, it's here. So save it in the correct uh, same folder because all these assembly file depends on these things. If you try to delete some of the parts here, this will collapse. So please have it in the same folder. Now uh, uh, time is running, so we will. Uh, you can try these other parts. Try to assemble this middle rod, these uh, knobs here, and uh, the bottom side also. Try it at, at home. So next day we are going to look at how to complete this. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, steps is given here. And apply these uh, bottom plates, screws. Sometimes the screws will not uh, correctly fit, fit. So if you have any questions, uh, tell me next day. So assemble these things and see. And uh, keep it for the future work. Uh, we will look at uh, thread mates later. So under advanced things, under mechanical mates, we have these screw mates. So we, will, we are going to look at all these things in the future classes. So for the time being, keep the file saved in your computer. We will apply these screw mates and show you how it works. So we will discuss all these things one by one. And for the exam, we will give one of them. Last year, we gave gear. Uh, we have given cam mates. For the exam, we have given gears. We have even I think universal joint we gave so a lot of things actually we have given so we will we, we discuss all these techniques and uh, if you have any questions tell me so we will wind up for today please uh, save this file for the next day and try to finish this tutorial and come so I will upload this uh, to the Eduscope if possible I will upload to the YouTube also so we will stop for today thank you for participating Thank you, sir.